and I did not notice that eight years ago. Went straight over my head when I was 14. I completely forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, let the 74th Hunger Games begin! The Hunger Games. The dystopian YA sensation written by Susan Collins. It was one of the first books that really got me into reading and taught me the joy of just disappearing in a book. At the time I may have been like 14, the last Twilight movie came out and right before that movie they showed the trailer for another movie and I remember my friend telling me, hey, you know that trailer for that movie? That's actually a book. It's called The Hunger Games. You should read it. So I went to the shop, got the book, Book, and I just remember that from the moment I picked it up I knew as you could say I was a goner. So now eight years later I'm going to reread The Hunger Games for the first time ever. I'm a little bit scared because I mean I know I loved this book back in the day but back in the day I also loved Twilight you know and I'm kind of scared that it is one of those books that I loved when I was 14 but if I reread it I might not enjoy it anymore. I have reread favorites before and every time I did that I came to the conclusion that I didn't love it as much as the first time around and I'm a little bit scared that when I reread The Hunger Games I'm gonna find out that I don't like it as much as I did when I was 14. But I really want to do it right now because at the end of May The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the prequel to The Hunger Games is coming out and I'm so excited for it but I want to have experienced the story again to kind of bring back the memories and make sure I remember everything correctly. So in this video you're gonna see all of my direct reactions to rereading The Hunger Games. Obviously it's gonna be filled with spoilers, I just want to take you along to a ride, kind of see it as a little recap for you, just experience the experience of reading The Hunger Games with me. Hope you enjoy. This is also the first video in a little series of videos about like the Hunger Games and dystopian books that I'm going to make leading up to the release of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snake. So if you're into that, subscribe. So without further ado, let's start the video. I hope you enjoy it. What's the point of this type of knot if you're, if you're just gonna let your hair hang down in your face? It doesn't even do anything. It just, just looks cool. Just want to be a zoom. I forgot how fantastic this book opens. Like the first page where she's talking about how Prim is not in her bed anymore because she's with her mother because it's the day of the reaping. Like, it's so good at building up that tension. I'm listening to it on an audiobook and I started listening to The Hunger Games yesterday evening and I'm not yet far yet but all I can say is I was immediately just transcended back into the body of 15 year old me. There were so many little details that I forgot about that all just came like springing back into my memory like the peacekeepers and Buttercup. The cat Katniss just went out to talk to Gil and they're talking about how they want to run away together. <laughs> I forgot how dramatic this story was. <laughs> what I can remember is from now on, it's just gonna be like this really long thing running up until the Hunger Games. I have this feeling that it's going to be a very boring thing. Oh, I completely forgot how fast this story moves. Like it's so fast paced. I think I'm about a sixth or maybe a fifth into the story right now. And we've already had, of course, like the reaping and the I volunteer as tribute. They went to the capital. She did the cool badass thing with the dagger in the table. She was like completely prepped, you know, stripped clean of all the hairs made pretty by all the capital people. And we met Sina. Oh, it's so weird because this is the first time I'm reading this story already knowing what's gonna happen and I thought that might possibly cause me to like it less because it's not really thrilling anymore because I already know exactly what's gonna happen but what I didn't expect is it also makes things more emotional because you know I already know what's gonna happen to Sinna you know later in the story so then reading like how we meet him for the first time and getting to know him is like 10 times more emotional like I can't imagine what it's gonna be like if I <laughs> if I reread Catching Fire and meet Finnick like I think I will break down. I do have one little thing they're now talking with Sinaba how they're gonna dress Katniss up you know because it has to be in the theme of the district district 12 with the coal mines and they're talking about how like years years and years and years it was ugly they were just dressed up like coal miners and this is like the first time Sina came up with something beautiful to set them on fire and I'm just like how in 74 years did no one come up with the idea of you know coal mines 
fire and embers and like pretty glowing coals. Like how is this the first time someone thinks of that? No one will forget me. Not my look, not my name. Katniss, the girl who was on fire. The oh, the nostalgia! <laughs> Ah, my heart. Another thing that has changed since I first read this eight years ago is I look completely different at the way Peta is introduced as a love interest. Like, I only now notice that there are so many little details like, oh, give me like a little flutter in my chest. And when I first read this book when I was 14, I think, I didn't 100% see it coming that Peta was going to be the love interest. I mean, I shipped him, obviously, but now, years later, after reading so many YA books, I have become like a pro, and I think you can all relate, of immediately recognizing who is going to be the love interest just by the way that they're described and the way their interactions are described, because now I just notice all these little details, all the, these little sentences that I'm like, yeah, if I were to read that now in a book, I'd be like, oh yeah, oh, he's going to be the love interest. I did not notice that eight years ago. We were just introduced to the AVOX, the people who get their tongues cut off because they're criminals. When I first read this book and when I watched the movies I was always like, oh, AVOX, what a cool name, what like a cool word to use for this, just a cool word. And it's only now that I realize they're called AVOX because Vox means voice and AVOX means without voice. They just did like all the interviews and Katniss is like twirling in her dress and I legit thought that that was going to be the moment she turns into her like Mockingjay dress. Um, but I think maybe that's catching fire. I noticed I'm kind of mixing up the stories and I don't really know which one is which. I guess that means that's good that I'm rereading it now. <laughs> I kind of forgot how great of a character Peta is. Like he's such a wonderful personality. Like so subtle. I just uh, listened to the scene where they are on the roof right before the Hunger Games and there Katniss and Peter are talking and he's talking about how he at least wants to die as himself and not some kind of monster that was created by the Hunger Games and <sighs> I'm loving it so much. Like honestly my conclusion so far is that it's so good. I was sleeping on how good The Hunger Games was. Like, I knew I enjoyed it, but I thought, oh, it's just one of those books that I really enjoyed as a teen, like Twilight, you know, that maybe if I read it now, it's not as good anymore, but no, it's so good so far. And The Hunger Games haven't even started. <laughs> then I hear the legendary announcer, Claudius Templesmith, as his voice booms all around me. Ladies and gentlemen, let the 74th Hunger Games begin! I thought The Hunger Games were only like in the last third of the book, but as you can see, I'm not even halfway into the story and The Hunger Games have already started. Maybe that was Catching Fire as well, where The Hunger Games only make up like the last third of the book. Right now I'm at the point where Katniss is like in the woods bonding with Rue and the thing is, I know that she's gonna die, I remember that much, but I don't remember how and when, so I'm just like... I was like shaking the whole time, like, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen, but I don't know how. <laughs> it just makes the whole scene, like, extra painful. So I've been at the part where the Hunger Games have started for a while now, and I have a few thoughts. First and foremost, I noticed that it's not as exciting as the first time around. Like, I expected to find the first half before the Hunger Games boring and then enjoy it again during the Hunger Games, because the Hunger Games itself, I remember when I read it the first time, was like the most exhilarating part. That was the part where I just couldn't stop reading and like stayed up late to read this book. But the second time around, it's less exciting because I already know what's going to happen. Like all the action scenes, they're fun. I'm having a good time, but it's not as exhilarating because I already know Katniss is gonna find a tree. I know she's gonna cut down the tracker jacker hive and ward off the careers. I know she's gonna get stung by the tracker jackers, but I also know she's going to survive it. Things like that. So I just remember when I first read this, there was that huge element of, oh my gosh, what the heck is going to happen? Is it all gonna be all right? And that's aspect is completely gone now because I already know what's gonna happen. So funnily enough, I enjoyed the first part with all the preparations for the Hunger Games more than the first time around and the Hunger Games part itself I'm enjoying it like a little less than the first time around but I'm still enjoying it 
a lot. Also, I can't believe how obvious it is that Peta is in love with Katniss. Like, it's so clear that he's not just playing it for the camera. And the first time that I read this book, I was like, not, I did not notice it. I was like, oh, is he playing? I don't know, is he really in love with her? And when it turns out that he was really in love with her, which I think we'll get to later. But now I'm like, it's so clear just from the beginning that he's into her. I know Rue is gonna die soon, but I don't know when. And I'm just like sitting here, just like tense. Didn't expect an audiobook could make me cry. <laughs> I shed a few tears. I mean, I knew Rue was going to be killed, but I completely forgot about the whole thing where Katniss sings for her. And this is an audiobook. So that was like a completely different experience because the narrator actually starts singing and her voice like breaks and it's so emotional. <sighs> that was like, if you haven't listened to this on audiobook, like you haven't truly experienced just the dread of that situation. Oh man, beautiful. And we're now in like the last third of the book. So this is where it's really gonna go down and we're really gonna have some fighting. No, no, no. I completely forgot the whole plot line of how they announced that two people from the same district can now win. Oh, how did I forget so much? This is ridiculous. Wow, they're so manipulative. Sneaky, sneaky bastards. Peta and Katniss's romance is just, oh, <laughs> I love it so much. I just love Peta as a character. He's such a like, can't really place him, you know? Like at one moment he just seems like, just like really nice, cute guy, but then at other moments he's like very charismatic, and then at other moments he's like very like mysterious, just oh, beautiful, love it. Hello and welcome to day three of listening to The Hunger Games. I haven't given an update in a while, that is mostly because I am just now at that point where you're just sucked into vortex and just want to continue reading and you don't think about anything else like the hunger games are full going like we just had the scenes in the cave <laughs> you know Peta has turned into a cake katniss drugs him with some berries she goes to the feast trash almost kills her and then kills clove the usual stuff <laughs> i just am reminded of when i first read this and just being so sucked into the story that you can't really think about anything else. Like I just forget to think about the fact that I need to give my reaction because there's just so many things happening that if I were to give my reaction to every single thing, it would be an hour long video. And I just feel very nostalgic about that feeling of being in bed late at night and like reading the entire night even though you know you have to get up early the next day to go to high school. <laughs> what a ride. Honestly cannot think of any other book that is so good and making me want to keep reading and keeping you at the edge of your seat with action all the time as much as The Hunger Games is doing to me right now. It's another beautiful day to read The Hunger Games. Every bird outside the windows fell silent, Peter says. Oh please, I say laughing. No, it happened. And right when your song ended, I knew, just like your mother, I was a goner. Peta says. I can't get over how obvious the romance between Peta and Katniss is. Like, I don't know how I was like so oblivious when I was a child, but it's like so clearly in your face that he's into her. She's like constantly talking about, oh, I don't, I think, I think I don't want Peter to die. Oh, I can't help myself but to compare him to Gil. Oh, Gil, Peter, what do I do? 
almost annoys me, but just not because it's the Hunger Games and I love PETA. Katniss, stop doubting if PETA's into you for real or if it's just fake. He's obviously into you. <laughs> We've reached a point where only PETA, Katniss and Kato are left. We've just heard about the Nightlock Berries, which foreshadowing <laughs> and I'm scared and right now I'm just gonna go for a walk and listen to I hope like just the rest of the story because I only have like an hour left boy <sighs> that really was some book man Wow. I mean, I knew The Hunger Games was a good book. I remember that I gave it five stars, but I just, like I said, I thought, you know, maybe it's just one of those books that I gave five stars because it was one of the first YA books that I ever read. I didn't really have anything to compare it to. I was scared that maybe if I read it now I wouldn't enjoy it as much. But honestly, after reading it again, my only conclusion is that it, it's better than I even remember. Just read the ending. The whole scene at the cornucopia with the mutts and stuff, oh my gosh, that just completely screwed me up all over again. The whole thing about Kato wearing the protective suit, which makes his death just longer and drawn out, that, oh my gosh. Nope, nope, nope. I remember when I first read this scene, Katniss and Peeta and Kato, they climb on top of the cornucopia. And I remember when I first read this book, I thought the cornucopia was just like one horn that was maybe like this big something, just stuffed with food and weapons and things. So when it was described that they were climbing on top of it and standing on top of it with the three of them, I was like, what do you mean they're climbing on top of the cornucopia? What do you mean they're standing there with all three of them? How the heck does that fit? <laughs> and it wasn't until I watched the movie that I was like, oh, so that's what it's supposed to look like. It's big. <laughs> and I just remembered that when I was listening to that scene again. Also, I realized that I picture every single character as their actor in a movie. I cannot, except for Katniss. Katniss is like, the original version that she was the first time I read it, but everyone else has just been turned into their actor. My overall thoughts after all that is that this is really great. J just honestly a fantastic book. I think I can now say with confidence that this is one of my favorite books of all time and I think everyone should read it. I also noticed that now that I'm reading it again while well, I'm 22 instead of 14 year old that I noticed all like the societal critique way better like all those nuanced messages that are in there went straight over my head when i was 14 i was just like yeah rebellion fighting action romance but now i'm like oh she got a real good point there like especially how the districts are kind of set up against each other and how the capital's goal is to kind of make them dislike each other when katniss talks about the tesseries that people can buy in exchange for their names in the pot for the reaping. She talks about how that sets the, the people within the district against each other and makes them not like each other if people do or don't buy tesseries. Whereas, she, like Katniss says, that's just what the capital wants, even though it's kind of their fault <laughs> that they have to buy tesseries in the first place. And how she mentioned that when Rue and Katniss talk to each other about their districts and tell them each other about their lives in their district, she says, well, the capital's probably not gonna broadcast this because they don't want the people to know that you can learn about other districts like they want every district to just be separate and not working together so that they don't have the chance to get together and stand up against the capital and the whole ending just the whole ending is so brilliant because Katniss and Peeta deciding to kill themselves so that there's no victor instead of killing each other that's not just like dramatic ending romantic it's like the moment that two people from districts decide to not stand against each other but only against the capital which is exactly what the capital does not want to happen because they want to set everyone from the districts against each other but in that moment Katniss realized that the only enemy here is the capital and not each other and that was brilliant and that just completely went over my head when I was 14. So yeah, The Hunger Games, five out of five stars. Not just a fantastically fun and engaging read, also just like 
some nice satirical critique as you would expect from a dystopian. I cannot wait for the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I know it's going to be an adult story. I have complete confidence in Suzanne Collins that she's going to make something really really good. So that was my reaction to rereading The Hunger Games. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you've like reread it and on what that was like for you. Let me know like your ideas about the new book that's gonna come out soon and then I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye!